Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Got some news today. We're going to get all into it. All into it. But first, today's video is brought to you by LevelGo.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro for under $16, Microsoft Office 2016 for $40, and Microsoft Office 2019 Professional Plus for under $80. And if you use my code PTL20 at checkout, you'll get 20% off of Windows 10 Pro, or you can use the code PTL15 to get 15% off of the entire website when you use the links down in the description below. So what is going on guys? I hope you're all doing well out there today as we've got a few news stories to get through in the world of tech. No gaming news today, but quite a few tech stories to get through. So let's get fired right into it, starting with Microsoft, who has now begun the official sort of countdown to the end of support for Windows 7, which will be on January 14th, 2020. So we've got less than 12 months to go before they completely cut off support for Windows 7. So if you've been hanging on to that Windows 7 copy for all these years and you're still not on Windows 10, um, you will still be able to technically run the OS, but you're not going to continue to get security updates and support, which can be pretty important to have if you want to keep your system safe. So it, it looks, I wouldn't honestly, after 2020, I personally wouldn't keep using it um, unless you have some very, very specific use case why you cannot use Windows 10. But uh, yeah, honestly, Windows 10 has pretty much been fine for me. I mean, there have been a few updates here or there that have had their issues, and I'm not a big fan of how the issue, the uh, updates are rolled out and how people are basically treated like beta testers um, for their operating system, and they pretty much got rid of their entire testing department at Microsoft for Windows updates. So that kind of stuff is not great, but overall, I mean, as far as just the interface is concerned and everything, I can't really say I have a major issue with Windows 10, at least not anywhere near as bad as what I had um, with Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. I had to use something called Start is Back for those. I actually still use it because I do prefer it to the default start menu on Windows. It's just a hell of a lot better. And also, according to Microsoft, they recently killed the, one of their features that they were planning to implement at some point called the Set UI feature. This is an example of it right here over on Hexus.net. As you can see, um, it basically is like the Microsoft Edge browser, but it would be for the desktop. So your desktop would essentially turn into an Edge browser where you would have things like your pictures and pretty much any application through it. And previously it was only going to be for UWP um, applications, but then they actually said that they'd be able to do it for all applications. But one of the main reasons that they backed out of doing this was not really because they didn't like it or anything like that but it was because of the now most current version of Edge, which is based off of Chromium, actually created way too many issues and it would have just been a ton of work if they wanted to implement it on the Chromium-based Edge browser. So they ended up backing out of it because it was too much work at the end of the day, and I guess that is probably a good thing because I think this looks absolutely awful. I want, basically, I want to have the speed of Windows 10 and all the security updates, but I pretty much still like Windows 7's interface, which is kind of how I have my desktop set up right now. It's pretty close to something like Windows 7 or Windows XP, but with obviously the speed and the current updates of Windows 10. So that's how I currently like to use um, my Windows operating system. If you guys like to see a video on how I've got my Windows set up, let me know down in the comments below. Up next, we have Tesla, who have dumped NVIDIA and are now producing their own chips for the self-driving AI inside of their cars. It's actually been out for close to a month now in cars like the Model S and the Model X, and in about the last two weeks, they introduced it to the Model 3. So they are now using their own SoCs, as you can see right here. It looks like a dual dual chip SoC that they are using to run all of their vehicles, and they have pretty much said that the reason that they're doing this is because it is better than what NVIDIA was providing them with theirs, actually showing about 20 time, 21 times faster than the NVIDIA ones. Um, although NVIDIA has responded to this and said that the comparison was not fair as they were showing it against a weaker system. That could be the case, but I don't really see Tesla doing this for a bad reason. I, just because It could be because 
Um, maybe it's more efficient. It could be because they're just saving a hell of a lot more money by handling their own manufacturing, which is actually being done by Samsung, but it could be cheaper than having to go through NVIDIA, who doesn't manufacture their own chips anyway. They still have to go through someone like TSMC or uh, Samsung or whoever. So yeah, it, they just are basically kind of cutting out the middleman here, and it sounds like NVIDIA is just, you know, sour grapes at the end of the day about losing this massive contract with Tesla. And this is gonna be a good thing, I think, for the Tesla cars, being able to do, you know, handle their own production of this kind of stuff and have full control from top to bottom is probably always going to be the best solution. Next up, we have AMD who are getting ready to launch their 50th anniversary CPU and GPU. That's right, the Ryzen 2700X 50th anniversary has actually been rumored for a couple of weeks now, and showing up on some e-tail shops. And now we can add to that a Radeon 7 50th anniversary GPU as well, which will feature an all red color as you can tell by the box art here. Looks like these are just gonna be provided by AMD, probably in very limited quantities for both of them as they are likely going to be cherry picked or binned um, for the CPU as well as the GPU, probably have higher, higher overclock out of the box and also better overclocking potential if they are better binned chips according to this slide it says it's going to be coming out april 29th so we've only got a week to wait for these actually to be available we don't have any info yet on pricing if they're going to cost a little bit more i would expect they probably will cost a bit more maybe like 50 dollars more for the cpu um the gpu maybe could be a hundred dollars more as soon as we have more information though i will keep you guys up to date and hopefully we'll maybe get hands-on with these and get to test them and see how much better overclockers they are than the original versions of these, the regular 2700X and the Radeon 7. Maybe we can even do a AMD 50th anniversary build. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys would think about that. We could do um, like red cables and all that stuff and just go full on AMD or uh, 50th anniversary build. I think that would be pretty sweet. Um, next up, we've got the GTX 1650. This is not really, uh, probably not too many of you out there, but this is going to be geared towards a uh, low-end, mid-range kind of 1080p gaming entry-level stuff. Um, it's going to be launching for $149. It's actually out today. I haven't seen a single review go live yet. I haven't heard anything from uh, GPU manufacturers or board partners, you know, sending these out for review or anything like that. I would like to get one for testing, but you know, it doesn't look like they're at least doing any. They didn't do any pre-release. Um, you know, GPU sampling on these cards because it's available now. You can buy it today. Embargoes are up, and there's pretty much nothing I could find online in, in terms of reviews. So hopefully, we will still see, we'll be, we will see some reviews coming out soon. But as I said, it's available today. It's going to be launching at $149, and it looks like it's probably um, going to be a heavily cut down version of the of the 1660. So that is all the news I got for you guys today. Please let me your thoughts, opinions, and everything as always down in the comments below. I do look forward to that. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on it down below. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you've been here for a while, ring the notification bell. That way you never miss a moment of content as soon as it goes up live here on the channel. And I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Tara.